The Shroom and Doom update added two new mutations to Grounded, bringing the total to 22. Mutations can come in handy no matter what you're doing in game. In this video, I'll show you every mutation, how to get them, and what they do when you activate them. If you're not subscribed to the channel, now's a great time to do so so you don't miss any future Grounded videos. Let's get started. So the first seven mutations that are on the list, the entire top row and the first one on the second row are all offensive mutations, which means they will increase the damage you do when you're attacking a creature. The first one's going to be Little Fists. You unlock Little Fists by killing 50 creatures with your fists. This means that you're punching, so you have no weapon equipped and you're just punching. Now, to be completely honest, this is probably going to be one that you almost never use because you end up getting a weapon within the first minute or two of starting the game, or you can. So it's pretty much going to be... I wouldn't. Rec I don't think you'll ever use this, but just in case you do, the fastest way to unlock it is going to be to punch aphids, weevils, or lawn mites. The first two don't do any damage to you; they just run away. The lawn mites are going to be the insect that does the least amount of damage to you. So, if you're looking to unlock it, just unlock it. Just run around and punch the smallest insects, and you should be able to unlock it pretty quickly. When you equip it, it gives you a bonus unarmed attack, which means it'll end up doing two times damage with your fists. Now, doing two times damage with a punch is obviously better than doing the single, uh, the one times damage, but even with the two times, it does so little damage that this mutation is probably going to be one that you almost never use. Second on the list is going to be Chopper. Chopper is unlocked by killing 50 creatures with an axe. That's for phase one. To unlock phase two, you have to kill 100 creatures with an axe, and then phase three is going to be 200 creatures. The weapons that you can use to unlock this are going to be the Peblet Axe and then the Tier 2 Axe, which is the Insect Axe. Either one of those will help you unlock this. And what this does is Phase 1 increases your Axe damage by 10%, Phase 2 20%, and Phase 3 30%. So if you're using, if you prefer to use an Axe as your weapon of choice, make sure you equip Chopper so you're doing extra damage with it. This does not do extra damage to weed stems or grass plant or gra uh, grass stems. It's only useful for attacking uh, insects with the with the axe. Third on the list can be Smasher. Smasher is unlocked by killing 50 creatures with a hammer. 100 is for phase 2, and then 200 is for phase 3. The hammers that are in the game currently are the Peblet Hammer, and then the Tier 2 Hammer is the Insect Hammer, so using either one of those will help you unlock the three phases of this. Phase 1 is 10% extra hammer damage, phase 2 is 20%, and phase 3 is 30%. So same, in same increases as the axe damage, except this time it's going to be with a hammer. So if the hammer is your weapon of choice, you want to make sure you might want to equip this because it's going to have you do extra damage. And of course, hammers are among the best weapons in the game because they do have a high stun chance. So they make, while they attack slowly, they can stun the enemies. Fourth on the list can be Javelinier. Javelinier is unlocked by killing 50, 100, or 200 creatures with a spear for phases 1, 2, and 3. Once again, it's going to do the 10%, 20%, or 30% increased spear damage, depending on which phase you've unlocked. The weapons that can currently be used to do this are going to be the tier 1 is going to be the Peblet Spear and the tier 2 is going to be the Stinger Spear. I don't believe there's any down here. I'm not sure about the Trident. The Trident may count towards this. I have not tested it out, but this may be one that counts towards it. This will end up being probably the third spear that you unlock anyway because you can unlock the other two pretty, pretty early on. So definitely the Peblet Spear and the Stinger Spear. And I, although this doesn't say spear in it, I want to guess that the trident, it's most likely a spear. So this might also count towards unlocking the javelinier. So if you're using any of those weapons, make sure you equip the javelinier so that you can actually do a, a extra spear damage. You can also throw spears, by the way, if you're unaware. You can, you can either use, use them in hand-to-hand -hand combat or you can throw them to do extra damage. Fifth on the list could be assassin. Assassin is unlocked by killing 50 creatures with a dagger. Phase 2 is 100. Phase 3 is two, uh, 200. And then it'll increase dagger damage by 10%, 20%, or 30%. And the daggers that are currently in the game are going to be the... Uh, oh, they're down here, actually. We've got the uh, Peblet Dagger, which is going to be probably the first one you unlock. And then we got the Bone Dagger, which is maybe the second one you're going to unlock. And then the third one's going to be up at the top here. That is going to be the Spider Fang, danger, spider fang Dagger. Say that 10 times fast. This is probably going to be the best one. Uh, the the be benefit of using the daggers is that they have a higher attack speed, so they attack very quickly. You can also use daggers to cut down, uh, you can use them underwater to cut down the eelgrass, and you can also use them to cut down uh, weeds and grass stems, so they're actually pretty useful for that, although they do seem to break much faster than the uh, axes do. So if you like to use daggers as your weapon of choice, make sure you use these. And 
Next up on the list can be Sharpshooter. So Sharpshooter is unlocked by killing creatures with a bow. It's going to be 50 for tier for phase 1, 100 for phase 2, and 200 for phase 3. It's going to increase bow damage by 10%, 20%, 30% respectively, depending on what phase you're on. The uh, bows that are in the game currently are going to come down here into range. We got the Sprig Bow, which is the tier 1. Then we got the two tier 2s, which are the Insect Bow and the newly added Crow Crossbow. So using any of these will help you unlock Sharpshooter. If you're like me and you like doing ranged attacks a lot, you're probably going to want to equip this as it's going to help you take down your insect foes much quicker with your ranged weapons. Uh, the seventh one on this list can be Barbarian. Barbarian is going to be unlocked by killing creatures with a club. Again, it's the 50, 100, and 200 for phases 1, 2, and 3. And it'll do 10%, 20%, 30% more damage depending on which phase you have unlocked. The clubs that are currently in the game are going to be the... Where's the first club? The Spiky Sprig is going to be the Tier 1 club. Then you're going to get the Tier 2 club, which is the Ant Club. And then the Tier 3 clubs are the Club of the Mother Demon, and the Mint Mace actually counts towards this as well. So there's currently four clubs that you can use to unlock this. The Mint Mace and the Club of the Mother Demon are among the best weapons in the game. So you're going to end up probably using those at some point. So I, I tend to use Barbarian frequently. If I'm not using Sharpshooter, I'm probably using Barbarian because I'm going to probably be running around with either the Club of the Mother Demon or the Mint Malice mace uh so those are the these are the seven that are currently in the game now one that's currently not in the game is the is one that's going to buff swords so there's also the mosquito needle and the larva blade neither one of these weapons have a buff so while they can be useful for combat you might like these they have a high attack speed the mosquito needle actually has life steal meaning when you're attacking a insect and you do damage to it, it'll actually heal you so they do have decent amount, and the Larva Blade is poison. I'm assuming at some point they're going to add a status for buffing swords because there are two more spots down here. I'm not sure exactly how many more they're adding. I think there was, like, in the files, there was a couple more that haven't been added, and I'm sure they're going to add one for swords. So right now there's seven that can buff weapons. So depending on which weapon you're using, your weapon of choice, it might be smart to equip one of these and give yourself a little bit extra damage so you can end up taking down insects a little bit faster doing... Less durability, using less durability on your weapons. So, Meat Shield is going to be the first one that is not unlocked using a weapon. You get Meat Shield by purchasing it from Burgle for 5,000 Roll Science. You will unlock the ability to purchase it after you give Burgle the Grasslands Burgle chip, which you can find directly next to him. So, when you go into the Oak Tree Lab and you basically revive Burgle, there will be a little cassette tape laying on the ground. You pick that up, give it to him, it'll unlock the ability to purchase Meat Shield. Next is going to be Buff Lungs. And, oh, and sorry, Meat Shield, what that does is it increases your max health. It only has one phase, but it does give you more health. Buff Lungs is going to be similar to Meat Shield. You have to unlock it by purchasing it from Burgle for 5,000 Raw Science. You get this after getting the Ant Hill Burgle chip, which is found in the Westerly Ant Hill. And we can really quick look at the map. So this is the, I believe this is the Westerly Ant Hill right here. Yeah, so it's right here on the left side of the Grasslands area. There's an Ant Hill here. I don't, it's pretty far down in there. You'll find the chip. You take it back to Burgle. Once you do that, you'll unlock the ability to purchase the buff lungs for 5,000 raw science. And what that does is it increases your maximum stamina by, I'm not sure exactly how much. Daredevil is going to be the third one that you can unlock from purchasing Burgle. Again, it's 5,000 raw science. And you're going to get this after you give him the, hedge burgle chip which is found at the end of the hedge lab the hedge is down here and i believe this burgle chip is in the is, is over here in this part of the hedge lab this is uh it's either in the hedge lab reach or the hedge lab it's somewhere it's like the last room up here that you'll get to it's one of the highest rooms and you'll just take that back to burgle and then you'll have the ability to purchase daredevil daredevil uh reduces the amount of damage you take from falling it will not reduce all fall damage so if you fall from even if you have this equipped you can't fall from like incredible heights but it will reduce the amount of damage you take from falling to some extent the uh, next on the list is going to be Grass Master, and Grass Master is unlocked by chopping down blades of grass, although apparently you can also, it will count if you destroy grass using either the Brapers, the Splappers, I believe, which will explode and they will actually knock down the grass. I mean, typically you're going to probably unlock this just by chopping down grass using either an axe or a dagger. And what this does is there's three phases. The first phase is cutting down 50 blades of grass. The second is 200 and the third is 500. And when you unlock phase one, it'll increase your chopping efficiency by 25%. Phase two is 50% and phase three is 100%. So if you're farming a lot of grass, you're trying to build some bases, this can be useful. Uh, this is also useful 
for, I believe this is also useful for chopping down weed stems, although I'm not exactly 100% sure. I do usually equip when I'm chopping down weed stems. Uh, next up is going to be Rock Cracker. Rock Cracker is unlocked in a similar manner. You're going to need to bust rocks. So you're going to have to bust 25, 75, or, and then 100 rocks in order to unlock the three phases. They will increase the busting efficiency by 25, 50, and then 100%. The rocks are the large white pebbles that are on the ground. Um, it, I believe it's only used for that. I think this actually should help you if you're... It, it actually might work if you're um, breaking clay as well with a shovel. I know when I'm harvesting clay and I use this, I can harvest the clay at a much faster rate. So I think it takes like two hits with a shovel instead of four. So if you're harvesting clay or stone or rocks, you're going to definitely want to make sure that you uh, have this equipped. Next up is going to be Ant Annihilator. The Ant Annihilator is unlocked by killing 50 ants. That's phase one. Phase two is 100, and phase three is 150. The first phase will give you a 5% increased damage to ants. The second phase will give you a 15% increased damage to ants. The third phase will give you a 25% increased damage to ants and a 10% damage resistance to ants. So when you get that third phase unlocked, you'll do extra damage and take less damage from ants. Next up on the list is going to be Coup de Gras. And what this does is it gives you a 10% extra chance for critical hits. You unlock this by discovering the Four Leaf Clover landmark. So right now I have moved over here on the map. The Four Leaf Clover is actually here. It's underground. In order to get to the Four Leaf Clover, you have to swim through this uh, secret tunnel that's right here that you probably didn't see, and I accidentally found it one day. There's this little pond here. I'm standing on the leaf. So to uh, get your bearings, basically the wood plank is right here, and we're just north of the yoked girth head, so that's the superhero head that's just sitting here. So we got this wood plank here. This is the one that's got the, uh, the ore weaver spiders and stuff under it. So there's this little pond area here, and what you do is you got to swim down here. Now, you're probably going to need to use either the bubble helmet, or you're going to have to have some kind of... It's going to be... I don't think you can make it under here by just swimming. You're going to need either gill tubes or bubble helmet. I got the gill tubes. I got the bubble helmet, so we're just going to swim down here real quick. And I'm not sure. I don't remember if there's any bugs down here or not. There might be diving bell spiders. I don't think there are. I think it's just a long swim. So we got some quartzite down here. But as you can see, it's a pretty long swim. But when you get up here, what you're going to do is you're going to reach up here and you're going to see here's the four leaf clover. And there's a little crack there. I couldn't actually see it when I looked down. So I don't think there's anything else down here. I don't believe there is just some quartzite and stuff like that. Is that actually an ant egg? That'd be cool. No, it's just a pebble. So this is the four leaf clover that you have to find. All you have to do is discover it. Once you discover that landmark, it's going to give you the coup de gras. Uh, next up on our list after coup de gras is going to be a juicy. Now, Juicy is unlocked by discovering all five juice boxes. I'm not going to run around the map to show you all five juice boxes, just in the interest of time. I'll just show you where the juice boxes are. We got the Apricot Puncha, which is down here in the hedge area. So it's on the uh, western side of the hedge area. It's uh, just to the east of the field station. So this will be like you come up here, there's the paper clip, and then you got the Apricot Puncha over here. You've got the Peach Fuzzo or Peach Fuzz Puncho, which is in, just inside the actually it's deep inside the haze area now. So it's inside the haze area. So you're gonna need the gas mask or some type of protection against the haze to get to that one. Then we got the Tropico Puncho, which is uh pretty much it's probably the first one you find. It's just northeast of the mysterious machine. Then over here, which is northeast of that, you're gonna find the lemon crime puncho. This is kind of in the uh, middle of the grass grasslands area. Uh, you probably want to be a little bit careful because I believe there's stink bugs and stuff. Now, maybe the stink bugs are over here. There's, I think there's some larva over here. And then the last one's going to be the armed raspberry puncho, which is over on the shore of the koi pond. And that's uh, there. Each one of these also, once you discover all those, you unlock Juicy. What Juicy does is it de decreases your thirst and hunger drain by 50%. So if you ever find yourself in trouble, like if you're if you find in trouble staying hydrated or full, uh, you want to might want to equip this because especially if you're not doing like if you're not doing anything in particular, you might want to equip that because then you'll just use less. You'll need to use less food as well as less drink. And also these juice boxes do drop uh, drops of juice, which will fill up. I think it's 10 percent of your hunger and maybe 50 percent of your thirst. They fill up more thirst and hunger. Uh, next on the list is going to be Natural Explorer. What Natural Explorer does is it increases your sprint speed by 3% for Phase 1, 6% for Phase 2, and 10% for Phase 3. You can unlock Phase 1 by discovering 5 landmarks, Phase 2 by discovering 20 landmarks, and Phase 3 by discovering 50 landmarks. Currently, there are not, I think there's only like 27-ish landmarks in the game, so you can only currently unlock up to Phase 2. 
and the landmarks are going to be anything from the the mysterious machine to the baseball that you find early on to pretty much anywhere i i'm not sure if the, I don't, the like the anywhere where these markers are basically so the juice boxes the soda cans uh the action figures and stuff that are around the map discovering any of those will help you unlock it so like i said currently you can only unlock the second phase this is the only mutation in the game right now that you can unlock they can only unlock two of next up is mertine Martine is unlocked by discovering three underwater landmarks, and the underwater landmarks are in the pond. Are in the pond, and what they're going to be is we got the sunken T Rex, which is down in the pond depths, the pond hatch, which leads out of the pond uh, depths. The I don't think the pond dome does not count because it is above, and then the pond lab counts towards it. The wedding ring, the sunken pot, and I believe the depths of the mouth. So if you find once you discover any of these, any three of these, it will unlock Martine. What Mertine does is it gives you a 10% increase in oxygen time, so you can hold your breath for 10% longer, and it also increases your swim speed by 15%. So this is super useful if you're exploring underwater, under the pond, looking for the uh, maybe the koi pond scale, or the koi fish scales, or sunken bones, or you're just trying to complete the pond lab because you do have to do a, quite a bit of swimming, and uh, that's what it's most useful for. All right, next on the list is going to be Cardiofan. Cardiofan is unlocked by exhausting your stamina 100 times, 250 times, or 500 times to unlock the phase 1, 2, and 3. And what it does is it, in, when you activate it, it increases your stamina by 10%, 15%, 20%, depending on if you're phase 1, 2, or 3. When I say decrease your stamina, that's going to be the blue bar on the bottom left corner. So if you sprint back and forth, it'll start going down. Uh, so your best bet is basically just to, early on, it's just to sprint everywhere or sprint, so you're basically just running everywhere or when you're underwater, just holding down the, the sprint button. What that'll do, it will, it will um, drain your stamina faster so that you'll be able to unlock this even quicker. And this is this is really good. I use this a lot of times, um, especially if I'm, if I'm just exploring because it lets you run all over the place without draining your stamina as fast. So this is probably one of the more useful ones that you can end up using in a lot of situations. You can use it underwater. You can use it um, just when you're running around. You can use it when you're in battle, especially if you're using a weapon like the Mint Mace, which drains your stamina pretty quickly. Um, so it's pretty useful. Uh, the first one on the bottom row of the list of the mutations is Reliable Friend. Reliable Friend is unlocked by reviving a friend five times for phase one, 15 times for phase two, and 30 times for phase three. This is the only one of the 22 that will require you to play in multiplayer. If you're playing in solo, this won't be any, it won't be relevant to you because you can't revive yourself. What it does is it increases the speed at which you revive a friend. Phase one is 15%, phase two is 25%, and phase three is 40%. So it'll be useful if you're playing multiplayer. Um, so that's what it's most useful for. Next on our list is Fresh Defense. Fresh Defense is unlocked by picking up a mint chunk. There are two places you can find mint chunks. One is inside the ice caps box here. In order to open this, you're gonna have to hit it with a hammer. In order to break the in order to break the mint chunks, you're gonna actually need the level two hammer. So you're gonna need the insect hammer in order to break this. And the other place you can find it is inside, I think it's it's one of the anthills has it. I don't remember which one it is. I one of the anthills has a mint chunk in it and it does respawn. The ones inside of the mint cap box do not respawn currently. So the only place you can get one after you get after you've uh, gotten these is you can get them inside the anthill and they respawn i don't there's one in there and it respawns every s several in-game days so what this does is when you activate it, it increases your resistance to bombardier, bombardier beetle acid attacks stink bug gas attacks and the haze by 25 percent so if you're trying to farm bombardier parts or stink bug parts or you're trying to explore the haze area uh you can just equip this and it's definitely useful so because if you don't have it that acid will do a ton of damage to you and the stink bug gas will do a lot of damage to you even when you have like uh, the acid from the stink uh, from the bombardier beetles will do a ton of damage to you even if you have decent armor on so definitely want to make sure you equip that it only has one phase and it's as simple as just picking up a mint chunk uh next on our list is going to be mom's jeans you get this by killing the hedge brood mother i have a video on the hedge brood mother i'll leave a link for that down below and i'll put a card up top if you're interested in that that explains exactly how to kill her uh basically what this does is once you kill her you will have a chance of spawning friendly spiderlings when you're attacking enemies. So the spiderlings will come in and they'll just attack the enemies for you. It's semi-useful. Um, I pretty much never use this one. I think maybe if the if it, if it had a better chance of spawning spiderlings in, or maybe they did more damage or something, it might be useful. But as it stands right now, I don't find this one too useful. But 
if you find a situation where you do find it useful, let me know down in the comments and uh, I'd be interested to try that out. Last one on our list is probably one of the ones that I would say is, I'd rank this as like one of the most important ones in the game just because it's going to help you against wolf spiders. It's Mithridatism. Uh, I do have a video on this one as well. I'll leave a link for that down in the description below as well. Uh, in order to unlock this, you have to kill five wolf spiders. There's been some debate over how you unlock it because some people said they didn't kill wolf spiders and they got it was by getting poisoned by them. I unlocked it from killing five wolf spiders. I then went into a creative world, a brand new creative world with bugs, and I killed five wolf spiders and unlocked. Now, what I, what I have th think we figured out is that in order to get it, you have to kill wolf spiders from five different spawns. So if you kill the two that are under the oak tree, um, there's two that spawn under the oak tree. If you kill both of them, I think it only counts towards one. I'm not sure about the one that spawns under the leaf that's just above the oak tree. Killing all three of those might only count as one. Um, so there's other, I think there's 11 different spawns around the map. So if you kill one up there and then you kill one of each of the different locations, it should help you unlock it. The reason this is so useful is it gives you immunity to venom damage, which is when you get bit by, when you get attacked by a wolf spider or the hedge brood mother, they, it will inflict poison damage on you. That will do a ton of damage to you, uh, especially early game. And with the change in how the wolf spiders patrol the air, patrol now, they patrol much more of the map than they did prior to the Shroom and Doom update. Apparently their patrol paths were broken. Uh, there may be adjustments coming to it at some point in the future because I, I, I'm not sure. I have noticed that the wolf spiders are pretty much covering the whole map and they've also, they can sense you from pretty far away so they will actively hunt you down while most of the other insects will... They're, they'll usually stay where they are, uh, where they spawn. The wolf spiders will actually like actively go out and try to find you and hunt you, and they can do so from I think it's like five thousand meters, which is five thousand centimeters, something like that. It's they have a pretty crazy range on how far they can find you. So it's probably why you're seeing them more wandering around the map. And this is going to be super useful. I pretty much have this equipped at all times because unless I'm like under the the pond, if I'm wandering around anywhere above above water. I have this equipped because I know getting like sneak attacked by a wolf spider, that poison will just do a ton of damage to you. So I pretty much have this equipped at all times. And uh, I just think it's probably one of the most useful mutations in the game. That's going to do it for this video. If you found it helpful, make sure you hit the like button as it really helps my channel. And let me know in the comments what your favorite mutations are. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.